here uh, who's already used selenium? Okay, wow, a lot of people. And who, who of you have already exported the uh, selenium test and have them run through the PHP unit? Um, a lot less. So, for those of you that actually have it run on the PHP unit, this is going to be a rehearsal. Uh, for everyone else, it's going to be mind blowing. Okay, uh, let's start with who am I? My name is Michael Angelo Vanam. I come from Belgium and English is not my natural language, but I do my best to make myself uh, well heard here in the group. And what do I do? I'm a PHP consultant. Uh, I've been doing this since 2004. And uh, yeah, I, I get to go to work many companies and tell them how to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, besides that, I'm also president of PHP Dunlux, which is the PHP user group in Belgium. Um, we have monthly uh, meetups, uh, we have uh, several events like uh, PHP Test Fest and so on. But we also have an annual conference in January. So if you want beer, chocolate, and uh, French fries, uh, come to Belgium because we have them with the gentleman fries. Um, and of course, yeah, you see me at several conferences around the world uh, speaking about uh, PHP. Most of the time it's all quality issues related. Uh, so if you have seen me somewhere else, yeah, I can be boring. Uh, don't confuse me with uh, uh, one of the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I know I live close by with Rafael Dons, and we're considered to be uh, the half of the PHP Ninja Turtles. But uh, yeah, don't confuse me with that. So what's our goal today? Well, we're first going to set up a new Selenium IDE and as I saw in the audience, this is going to be like a good rehearsal. Um, we're going to record the uh, user acceptance test, we're going to convert them to PHP unit and then we're going to run them continuously and then even have a look at multiple process support. I do want to have a small disclaimer. This is not a replacement for you, proper unit test. Who is doing unit testing? Just raise your hand. Okay, that's still not enough. Um, for those of you that aren't doing unit testing, um, you can start off with this, but uh, do try to get more into uh, proper unit testing because you need to send for a set right your code. And in case uh, something happens, uh, your boss is not posting anymore. Anyway. User acceptance. Who has been ever to an Apple store? Okay, quite a few. Uh, user, what was your experience when you came there? It's beautiful. So you can see and watch and touch it and nobody has to get any questions. So you can just play with it. So yeah, you, you can play with it. So, how does that feel when you have the ability to first try out an application before you actually decide I'm going to buy it or not. It's a natural thing. It's a natural thing. How come that nobody else is doing it? Yeah, but you're right. It, 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 you, you can come in to the store, you, you play with those things, you can feel it, you can touch it, and you know from the experience you have in the store whether or not you're going to buy it. And this is what we call user acceptance. Basically, exception testing is a test conducted to determine if the requirements or specifications for a contract are met. And this is straight from Wikipedia. Convert this to the Apple Store, it is basically the same thing. You're feeling, you're touching, you're experiencing, hey, this is a match for me, I'm going to buy this. Or if it's not a match for me, I'm not going to buy it. So, but we're not an app store, we're not selling hardware, we're web application developers. So how does it work for us? Well basically we have a checklist of all kinds of features that we have in a web application. And yeah, we, we want to do some functional testing in accordance to this checklist. So functional testing, uh, just test the functional requirements. Say no access to a profile without authentication. And, and maybe we want to test some UI elements or UI interfaces on, on the web interface, like buttons, form elements, AJAX controls. 
But I do have a word of caution. The, when you do the UA testing, it's always the generated output. So again, it's not replacement for unit testing. So what appears on the screen might be okay, but the behind the scenes, the code base itself can be crappy code. But at least functionality, nobody knows because they experience it. And also remember that this UI test, especially with Selenium, they are heavily dependent on your DOM tree. The DOM, the HTML inside your web application. If you have a very creative design, and from time to time I have that experience, uh, they fill a file with every element of the DOM tree. So every time they do something, oh my, uh, Selenium test is better. I know. They have their job, I have my job. But try to be more uh, communicative, uh, communicative with the people because the moment that they make a, a major difference in how the company is uh, set up, your test will fail. And you don't want to maintain all your tests every time there is a change from the company. So that's just a word of caution. But why do we actually are going to use this new test for? Well, basically the process support. And nowadays, uh, just a quick uh, question here. Who uses uh, Internet Explorer? That many! Okay, let me rephrase the question. How many of your customers are using Internet Explorer? <laughs> So, as a developer, we don't use it in the next We have our Mac OS, we have our Linux. From time to time I see a developer working on Windows. No, no hard feelings there. But um, they, they never test their applications with the next Alright. Why aren't you using Internet Explorer? You, coming into the area of the front. <laughs> Why aren't you using Internet Explorer for development? <laughs> Why do you use a computer for the <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Now, uh, Internet Explorer had a very, yeah, let me call it bad reputation in, in, in the past uh, years uh, to be not very compliant with all the web standards. So, while all the other browsers were compliant, Internet Explorer was not. And if you were that fortunate that your customers had Internet Explorer, yeah, most of the time you need to do most of the rebuilding of the web interface because it didn't work on Internet Explorer. But according to Microsoft, everything is off now, they're compliant with the web standards. Who works for Microsoft? <laughs> that may be. It's not! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but Internet Explorer is especially for, for, for the mainstream uh, user, it's the browser they use. If I look at my statistics, uh, all the customers we see, uh, about 60 70 percent are using Internet Explorer. And there's a wide variety of Internet Explorer users. We still have IE6 users, unfortunately. Um, but we still have to support them. And besides of that, we have Firefox Chrome, Opera and, and a whole bunch of uh, more exotic browsers. But, yeah, you need to test this. You need to test your application. Because nowadays, people are not just using a computer anymore to serve web pages. They also use <coughs> mobile phones. They use TVs. So, how does that operate in your home with your application? Well, we are lucky. Selenium comes to the rescue. <coughs> And what is uh, Selenium? Well, it's a plugin for Firefox. Yeah, but we're talking about browsers and UPs. We covered that. First of all, what we need to do is we need to report our interaction with the website. And therefore, we use Firefox because there is a plugin we use for Firefox. It's that simple. So, let's get the plugin. So, go to your favorite uh, search engine. My case is Google. Type in Selenium IDE. It's searched. 
And you will see Selenium IP download. And then, yeah, this is recorded a couple of months ago, so the version is not correct anymore. But this is how easy it goes as far as installing the plugin. <coughs> and when you're done, he uh, probably asks you to reboot, but we're not going to do that because we need one more plugin. And the plugin will be the PHP format. And I will tell you in a few moments why we need that. So, let's go install the PHP formatter. <coughs> Accept, yes. <coughs> and we're ready to install. Yes, I'm doing this on the news. Just in case you guys. <laughs> so, the add on is installed. Let's go open it. You will find it somewhere in the tools. So, you might be. And okay, there you have it. We're ready to rock and roll. So let's get started. Uh, the way that I use Selenium is basically on an uh, issue per issue basis. Because those are the most clear uh, descriptions of functionality that's all about. So I go to GitHub or whatever kind of uh, tool that you use, I pick it as case. For instance, issue number seven, and it says, well, there is no uh, marker saying this task is done. And we need to implement this. But first, let's verify that this issue is in production. So we go to the website, and we're going to make a recording of right text. So we make sure that the record button is on, and then we just go and Click about first we log in. <coughs> and as you can see, there is no field saying this was be done. And when we go and edit this, there's no way we can say okay, this was this page. So we log out again because I have the tendency to always start from a blank <coughs> state. So I log in, do my thing, and I log out again. So we have recorded everything, so we can just play it along. And you can also manually execute all the elements. And once we are at the position that we need to be, we're going to uh, do a little bit of TDD. I know this on the side is more about the other, so I want to support them. And as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five uh, positions, so we need to make room for another position there. In our so we're going to insert the commands, and as you type the commands, you will see it will give you a quick. <coughs> Pick, pick, uh, pick list of uh, uh, all kinds of functionality that you want to choose from. And we're going to use the uh, links path uh, to uh, find out the location. And we want to make sure that the value is done. And you have this nice functionality, the public find here, uh, that allows you to immediately check if your uh, search where it is located. Okay. So, it's in there, when we execute it, uh, well, it will, will not work because it's not there. Um, and we have another command we're going to insert here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to assert that the element is present and the element is <coughs> check mark for saying this task is completed. I know it's a link application, but I'm going to something. So, 
go into the next one and it will say, oh, input is not found. But at least now we know how to fix the whole application or the issue for this. So now we're done and you have to imagine at the moment of you have to imagine that we're hard working fixing the issue and after 10 minutes we're done. So let's uh, see that we actually fix it. So we're still on the side out. We run it. And as you can see, everything passes. We're okay. Good. <coughs> and we can save this uh, uh, test case as an HTML. So we can also pass it on one of our code developers. And that's it. It's that easy. Who thinks this is it? This is done. There is nothing for you. Fast as you know. Because we're developers. We're lazy. We don't want to hand out HTMLs to developers and then have back and forth. No, we want to do things automatically. We have version control right now. Who so uses version control? Or who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> yes, you? <laughs> who are using or who's not using? <laughs> not using. Oh. <laughs> You're lucky. <laughs> anyway, automated testing. Therefore, we use PHP Unit. So, if you remember, we had the PHP formatter downloaded as an additional plugin. And we're going to use that plugin to just export it as PHP, PHP Unit. And this will create automatically a PHP unit test case for you. And it will look something like this. I know it's going to be hard readable at the back, but don't worry, the slides will be online after this talk. Um, so, well, it starts off with class example, and then a setup, and then uh, test my test case. That's okay, but yeah, we need to tweak it a little bit. First of all, let's make the example uh, a class name that we can actually do something with. So, uh, mark task and test dump test. Sounds a little bit more appropriate. Um, we're going to use a uh, browser, eXport, I'm sorry. Um, and, and we're going to uh, uh, use uh, this ID and this port to connect to um, when we run our unit test. We're going to do that in a, in a moment. And last but not least, uh, we're going to test the mark test as uh, done and that's everything that we need to modify on the export this PHP uh, unit in this case. I wish it was a little bit easier for us, but I can look at this. Uh, on the same page where we downloaded the plugin, you can also download uh, the web driver Selenium uh, and you can start it, and of course you start it with the app file on Windows, and you put it in the SH. It's uh, running Java, I'm sorry, uh, but you need to install Java, and from that point on, you, you can uh, run uh, the Selenium server there. And when you run it, you run it basically in the background. So all you say, PHP unit, uh, it's so common. And I was executing um, the Selenium test that we did on our computer. Yeah, we did a bit, little bit. There you go. One test it was working. We're okay. I see you think. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> let, let me show you how it runs on the node. So when I execute PHP unit, this happens on the machine. This is all done with PHP. No hands involved. I mean, I'm not touching you. <laughs> no, this is all done using PHP. And I just made a, a recording on the Windows machine. Let's execute it again. There you go. You signed up. 
as the past. So, let's go over the advantages here. Well, first of all, you can start testing immediately. If you have no knowledge about unit testing, this is the test next thing. Um, you can even test the hard to test kind of situations uh, when you have a lot of JavaScript interactions and so on. Um, you can add more nodes for parallel testing if you have like a whole bunch of those test cases. You can set up like a collection of servers that execute all those tests parallel. Um, testing different browsers and platforms. And of course, since the PHP unit, a bit of UCI. No. But, yeah, that's all nice, but how do we do that? Well, first of all, the next steps, let's do multi process support. What we do is, and this is what I did, maybe you guys are going to have a different degree, but I created the base test case. In the base test case, I provisioned uh, the settings for the, the, the entry node, the server that's running. And I have some uh, constants there, username, password, the base URL, and then I have my uh, public static browser array. And this array is what I call my magic. This is where I put all the browsers in that I want to support. In this case, I only have uh, one to three. Uh, if you have um, more browsers you want to add to that list, you go ahead and it's very easy. So, how does it work? Well, first of all, for Internet Explorer, you choose the browser the Explorer, uh, the host and the port. The same goes for Firefox, and same goes for uh, Chrome. And the only thing that we need to modify in our test case export from Selenium is that we uh, make sure that we extend the test case. So we require it once, and we extend it. And that's it. Of course, our setup portion is gone, we don't need it, and everything else is here, and of course we use constants for username and password. And when we run our tests, PHP unit, go, as you can see, it's not cheating. It works first in the next board, everything is cool. And ultimately, it will fire up Firefox. So, and that's the not piece of Chrome. So, what we did right now is a few modifications. We have now three browsers with full support. It's completely automated and requires no further interaction with you as a developer. Who doesn't like this? Please raise your hand. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, the benefits, well, I think you guys can, can tell it uh, for yourself. You, you're this on multiple browsers, uh, you can detect uh, calls from browsers, and uh, this is i6, in case you still have to support it. Um, you can modify your apps to modify to uh, just to these uh, XLU browsers and, to, and make sure that the rest doesn't break because you already have the other browsers in support as well. So, with a few modifications, you're fairly done. But let's go a little bit further. multi study. And this is not public, I really have that many elements. <laughs> <laughs> the grids. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm way behind things because now we have a and all that. Uh, it used to be grid and I liked it because it gives me this matrix kind of thing. Anyway, what you have is you have a centralized server which we call the hub. You have different kinds of clients, which we call nodes. And these clients, they register themselves to the hub. It's that simple. And once you have that set up ready, you can execute your test. 
to build this automation and in clients as you go. So you can have multiple browser support, multiple platform support, and so on. So how does it look in Schema? Well, Jenkins. Uh, who uses Jenkins? Okay. But it could be good. So in Jenkins, you execute your CI list. It uh, connects to the Windows web. And the Windows web launches three little uh, tests on Windows and then Mac OS X. And we also have clients that have uh, Citrix environments. We also have uh, nodes that are running within Citrix, connecting to that. So we can have those part of this kind of environments. We need to uh, uh, set the role node, and then we need to uh, register to the hub, and we're good to go. On the, uh, on the hub itself, you can see all the clients that are currently registered and ready to accept your uh, unit test or <coughs> unit test. Well, the biggest problem we face is we love this, we love Mac OS, but they don't have IE. And like I said in the beginning, we have a lot of customers running IE. So, it doesn't really matter, we can have multiple platforms next to each other. And again, we modify our base test case. So, one point that we need to focus on, we can have our hub Mac, hub Windows, and hub Linux, and everything is good to go. I can talk a whole lot more about how to do this and so on, but the nicest part is everything is well documented. Just go to selenium.hq.org and you will find a whole bunch of information about what kind of uh, commands are, are there available, how do you want to uh, search XPath uh, elements, how you want to search for CSS style uh, elements, or just use uh, proper IDs or something like that. It's all documented there. And another thing that I really want to suggest is go check out phpunit.de. It has a complete chapter about Selenium testing. Within there, you will find a whole lot of other information. Most of the information you will find uh, also in my slides, and he will explain, most of us here will explain a little bit more about how to look up things uh, and how to do those smart tests kind of thing. Um, I tried to get my demo ready using uh, testing on my iPhone. Uh, I don't have a network, sorry about it. Um, I was almost there, but unfortunately it didn't work. But nowadays you have a driver you can install on your iOS device or on your Android device and you can use your Android device as one of those elements in your head and start testing applications. So I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, as a credit, these people were very kind of enough to share their photos with great comments. If you have more information about me, uh, please contact me uh, with that details. And don't forget to rate me on Jordan. Uh, I think this was the number. If not, uh, we will modify it. Thank you. I will repeat the question. Okay. Uh, does uh, uh, does Selenium help uh, in any way to uh, you know, test uh, visual issues? As in, Internet Explorer has its own version of CSS. So, uh, the, does Selenium help with it in any way to see? Okay, broken idea. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the question is, uh, does Selenium help you uh, test the visual aspects of a web application? Uh, more currently with a, a special CSS for Internet Explorer compared to other CSSs. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you can have your uh, uh, test uh, 
uh, written out, so you can actually say, okay, this uh, many pixels from the top, this many pixels from uh, the side. Um, if you want, you can actually create a complete grid over your web application and have every element there position-wise on, uh, yeah, on that grid of the system. Uh, if you want to do uh, click interaction, mouse over interactions, uh, you can also use the, 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 the uh, X, Y, Z uh, point uh, navigation, but I prefer to just to use the uh, element IDs or class uh, elements because it, it's a lot easier. And sometimes the X, Y coordinates are calculated a little bit differently because there is a, a, a little bar in between or something like that. So uh, I, I, I'm not really relying on, on those kind of things. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, I don't know. Like I would like to show out the one of the uh, yes. is uh, why, why did you choose uh, selecting version 1 over version 2? Uh, I think you know it's always better. Uh, I'm currently using uh, version 2 and I didn't have to modify my test cases. Uh, this is a recording uh, because it, I pre recorded this. Um, it uses a older version because I recorded when there was the latest version. Uh, so don't focus on the version. Uh, the test, as I have done it, I, uh, I can do it again with the latest version and it still runs uh, perfectly. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have uh, three massive, massive uh, questions. Uh, massive questions? Yes. Oh, I don't oh, believe yes. they are massive questions. Uh, first one, uh, we recommend to uh, run the test in the teamwork. For example, uh, if someone is, correcting one thing, is fixing one thing and the test is pretty messy and uh, it runs for, a, for about five minutes. How to work with the test and fixing this part? Uh, okay, first uh, first part is uh, if your test is massive, then you're testing something wrong. You need to have small tests. Okay, but uh, as usual. Yeah. Secondly, uh, as I showed, you can have multiple nodes running in parallel. So the test will be executed on one node. Oh, the node is busy. It will execute on the second node the following test. So there is no delay. It can be that your whole test case. Uh, scenarios all have been executed except that one that you started at the beginning. It can happen. But this is why we use CI. We commit to the uh, code base and CI will take care of it. We don't wait until we, the tests are finalized. No, we wait until the report comes out in, uh, in uh, uh, CI. And when Jenkins uh, sends us an email, something broke, we have a look, okay, what broke? And, uh, the second question uh, is a Selenium correct tool for testing at dynamic apps, uh, for example, XJS or MQLJS? Uh, for JavaScript uh, testing, I prefer to use uh, a tool like QUnit or uh, uh, other unit test tools for uh, JavaScript. Every framework has its own test tool nowadays. So use them for uh, yeah, proper unit testing on that uh, JavaScript code base. But all the interactions, the stuff that you cannot do using uh, MVC uh, the testing uh, with uh, your framework, you can uh, use Selenium for that. And, and I don't see why not, because it behaves as a human behind the browser. If you have like a page refresh or a table refresh, meter refresh inside your page, uh, that would still occur using Selenium test because that's the digital JavaScript in action. And that would be better by a browser. Uh, there are some. Uh, how do you recommend uh, to separate uh, tested parts of code? For example, if we are you're testing uh, unit test of the code, you can separate the particular class. And put it into the test. Uh, what you show us, what you show us, uh, the 
whole process for getting the task done was uh, created from scratch. Every task uh, we want to test should be uh, prepared from scratch uh, with login, sign out, as uh, well. Well, the reason why I, I, I showed you this is uh, okay, we have an issue uh, and we want to first make sure that the issue is general. So if that report comes in, we, we have our unit test that verify that the test is general because we did the calculation for or if it's a UI is an issue like this, we go and check it out. And that's why we start from scratch. If we already have a test case that's already sold in this, and of course we can update it. And we can update it uh, manually using the uh, IDE um, writing the PHP uh, unit uh, test case. But in my experience, it's easier just to record or uh, load up the, the HTML and say, yeah, and make modifications if I need, export it again to the PHP unit. Because the modifications from uh, the exported PHP unit to the proper PHP unit are very small compared to all the manual work that you need to do. So, so that's one Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, there was one here. Yeah, give me the mic. Uh, you, talk, uh, you have asked me about, uh, about support on the iOS on uh, Android device. What about uh, IDE on the Windows Phone? IDE on the Windows Phone. First of all, I I have not even seen the Windows Phone yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, I, I believe that uh, there is going to be a web driver soon uh, because uh, the company that really supports uh, Selenium uh, because Selenium is a open source and one of the major contributors is uh, Source Labs which provides the same functionality that I showed you as a cloud-based uh, yeah, pass on uh, sorry, software as a service and I, I think that uh, in their announcement that they are going to support Windows Phone so, I, I believe in, in, in not so long time a, a product will be available to support with those phones as well. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, here. 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 I have a question about how does it scale up in terms of performance? Because what we just saw was a, a quite simple example that ran for about, I don't know, 20 seconds. If you compare it to a regular PHP unit test that runs under one second, um, and from practice, uh, you, and, uh, you have a bigger application and you have a lot of tests, okay, you have an automated, but from practice, you end up having a, a bar of nodes and you run it for uh, many hours. So, how does it scale up? Very good question. Okay, um, our PHP unit test cases. Uh, just the test cases, not the assertions. We have 9,600 test cases. Not a lot, but it's sufficient. They all run under 16 seconds. So that is very decent. The Selenium test, as you saw, with this very simple uh, exercise, it takes a whole lot longer. So we have separate nodes for that. And as we have uh, virtual machine machines on uh, uh, Windows Azure and on Amazon, uh, we can spin off as many entities as necessary to have enough of the, the support that we actually are seeking. Um, our Selenium tests are around 1200 uh, tests and they run for 3 hours. And we have uh, now nine, 96 uh, instances already. We have uh, 96 nodes uh, running. Yeah. Really well. Yeah, and you, the, the, the call comes in in uh, CI, it uh, yeah, starts up the, the instances, executes the, the, the test, has the reports, shuts them down again. So, <coughs> in computation time, it's not really that much. Uh, it's not really expensive, but you have at least the power to, to scale up. And because of the, the nature of uh, Selenium, um, 
with the central node, and you can have like multiple central nodes hooking up to a, uh, uh, yeah, a major node that you put it that way. You can actually uh, yeah, distribute all the requests uh, to as many uh, yeah, instances as you want. Uh, if you all let uh, the request go through a single node, that can be a bottleneck. Any other questions? No? Okay, well, then, um, yes, there's one. Uh, I have a question about uh, testing. Uh, when you have a multi node and the test will uh, be unique, uh, run functionality like uh, delay a record uh, order from shop. Uh, in this case, we cannot uh, replicate the problem. Uh, we must uh, start uh, load the base, and with multi nodes, we run Thank you. 
Well, again, thank you very much for your attention.